Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about Stargirl episode 13, The Reckoning. So this is the season finale slash series finale of Stargirl, unfortunately. I'm going to be honest, I feel like this episode felt a little rushed and it wasn't the most satisfying conclusion, unfortunately, but let's go ahead and just get right into it. So the episode opens up with a flashback to Sylvester coming to life. He's being, he's strapped to a table, Icicle's there, Ultra Humanite, uh, Dr. Ito, I believe, or Dragon King's there. And it turns out this is when they're performing the drain, the brain transfer of the ultra humanite's brain into Sylvester's body, which this scene was a little horrifying. I thought it was kind of just going to cut to the next thing after they mentioned it. But then we hear Sylvester like start shouting. By the way, Sylvester asks for or what happened to Pat and he says some other things. But the fact that he brought up Pat, well, he says Stripesy, but it shows that he does care about him. I thought that was sweet. He was concerned for his friend. I feel like we never really saw the relationship between these two. Like we did a got little glimpse but everything up to this point for this season has been fabricated. I mean, we can assume that maybe they had this kind of bond. Otherwise, Pat wouldn't have. I'm, I feel like he would have caught the Ultra Humanite sooner had their bond not been the way it was before. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. But anyways, yeah, we hear that like... We hear the little saw or the, the pizza cutter, the brain, the head cutter, I don't know what you want to call it, going off while Sylvester's like screaming. So yeah, that was a little disturbing. By the way, I have a couple of questions about this. I think it says this was like 10 years ago or 13 years ago or something. If Dragon King was supposed to get the albino gorilla's body, where did the gorilla go or where did he keep it? Because uh, during season one, Dragon King was just using his own body, right? That part confused me a little bit, but I guess it doesn't really matter. So yeah, next scene we get Courtney and the JSA kind of piecing things together again. They did last episode, but we're seeing a little bit more of that now about how Sylvester is being weird. He's giving people bad advice. It's not really making any sense. So we cut back to the McKents and Icicle's telling Cameron that Pat has died and Icicle and Starman have formed a truce to take down the Ultra Humanite. Uh, Sophus, I think that's the grandpa's name. I looked it up. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but he tells him to stop lying in um, Norwegian, I think is what they speak. But yeah, he tells him to stop lying and then Lily tells him to be quiet and that their enemies are dying tonight. So, so they're in on this whole thing, apparently. Although obviously the grandpa's not, or Sophus is not here for it. I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm saying his name right. So Icicle tells Cameron that basically he gives him some instructions and we find out that Cameron lies to Courtney. He calls her, tells her where Starman is, which is in the junkyard. And Courtney's like, how do you know that we're looking for Starman? Uh, well, actually, I think she asks how he knows like where Starman is. She's just kind of confused, but she takes his word for it. So we actually cut back to Pat in his grave site. And he actually digs his way out somehow. It is raining, so I think the ground is wet. Well, he kind of explains more so how he did it later. But yeah, he escapes. So we cut back to the Cindy squad. They escape from the sewer and end up at Blue Valley Tires. So cut back to the JSA who's heading into the junkyard for this confrontation with Starman. And they're all talking about how Artemis will probably just show up to save them in the nick of time. I guess like how she randomly just, how she's been doing that throughout, well not throughout, but she's done that a couple of times overall throughout the show where she just kind of shows up out of nowhere and does some things. Actually, no, that happened this season. That happened twice this season. But yeah, shout out to Artemis, I guess. This, I felt like this scene was almost telling us that Artemis was not going to show up, but that's how I interpreted it. So the McKenzie and Starman are there at the junkyard and they're trying to make a truce with Courtney and the JSA and they basically tell her they lie about everything. They say that Pat died. Basically the way they say it is that Pat did not agree with this truce and then he ran into the woods and then the ultra humanite killed him. But Courtney is very skeptical. She does not believe a word they're saying. Uh, Cameron tries to reaffirm that it's true even though Pat, I mean, he doesn't even, he's just taking his father's word for it. But anyways, he tries to tell them that it's true that he died. And that's when Pat shows up with Stripe and he tells them that Sylvester is actually the ultra humanite. And then Sylvester gets really upset. Well, the ultra humanite gets really upset. I'm probably just going to continue to call him Sylvester. He just like shouts at him. And then a huge battle breaks out. Cindy attacks her dad, a Dragon King. Also, I forgot to mention it before, but I guess technically Cindy was right when she said that uh, the white gorilla was one of her dad's experiments because in a way it kind of was since he transferred his brain into its body. So... But yeah, the fight starts. Our man fights Pat and the JSA, Courtney and friends fight the McKents. But when Beth and Sophus, uh, whatever, the grandpa, when she tries to fight the grandpa, she can see that he's hesitating with her goggles, not her own. She doesn't analyze his body language, but her goggles tell her. But anyways, she tells him that she doesn't want to fight and he agrees that they shouldn't be fighting. And then Lily shows up and she basically says that if he doesn't want to fight, then she's just going to kill him. That's when Yolanda comes in. She tries to shoot Yolanda with her ice, but she ends up knocking a car down and it falls on top of her and kills her, which was, I feel like that was kind of, I don't know if it was funny or disturbing, not disturbing, but it was just so like 
what? I feel kind of bad, honestly. Even though she was evil and she murdered people, wasn't really a good person, I still felt like, what a way to go. Anyways, so yeah, she dies. Okay, so this is another part that was a little strange to me. I didn't fully get it at first, but okay, here goes. So back to the fight with Cindy's squad versus ul the Ultra Humanite, or sorry, Dragon King. Cindy is getting beaten up, like she's losing the fight, and Jakeem makes a wish. I don't remember the exact words of his wish, but he wishes that Dr. Ito will never be able to bother her again. Okay, he basically describes the wish as, <laughs> describes Cindy as the most beautiful woman in the world, and because he's the one believing in that, like he believes in, he believes that with his heart, his whole heart, that it works. And it ends up turning Dr. Ito into a stuffed animal. So I feel like that was a little abrupt, but we'll get into that. But yeah, he's taken out basically. So back to the fight with Starman and Pat. Starman's kind of being creepy during this fight because he keeps, or I guess the Ultra Human. I'm sorry, these identities are just confusing. The Ultra Human just keeps laughing and it's kind of eerie. It's a little creepy. Also during the fight, Rick, who's trying to use his, he's trying to fight, I think, without his hourglass. Uh, I'm actually not 100% sure what was happening, but he was feeling really dizzy. So that's why I'm thinking he wasn't using his hourglass. The withdrawal, I guess, is starting to mess him up. So Icicle's getting ready to attack, and that's when Barbara shoots him with the crossbow, which was awesome. You know what? That was actually a really cool moment. At first, when the arrow, when he got hit by an arrow, I was like, whoa, wait, is this Artemis? But no, it was actually Barbara. Maybe that's also the reason they mentioned the whole Artemis thing to make you think it was Artemis, but it turns out to be Barbara, which is 10 times better because as you, because Barbara's been saying like fighting isn't really her, which I don't know the way she said, I know what she means when she says that, but it just sounds kind of weird. Cause it's like, there's nothing wrong with, def you know, defending yourself and knowing how to defend yourself. But yeah, she comes through with that crossbow. Oh, and then Icicle says, basically says that they could reignite what they had. And she's like, there was never anything between us, which is true. That was all one-sided on his part. I mean, I'm pretty sure she appreciated him for, you know, being one of the few people that's actually helping her out as far as in her job. It seemed like everybody was kind of just shooting down her idea. Well, not everybody, but the people in charge were shooting down her ideas, but she appreciated that aspect, but that doesn't mean anything, you know? Anyways, after that, Cameron attacks his dad and again, more fighting. Barbara tells Courtney that her staff, I actually don't remember how this exactly goes down, but Courtney is... Courtney basically thinks she can't get the staff back because Starman has it and he's able to use it, or the Ultra Humanite. But Barbara tells her the only reason that he's able to use it is because she believes that he can use it, which is interesting. I kind of like that aspect. I don't know. It's kind of random to me that Barbara's the one saying this, but I guess it makes sense. I don't know. Anyways, I kind of like that because I feel like that's kind of like Jakeem's pen. We thought it, would, it needed to be super specific, and I guess that's one way it works, but really, apparently, it really has to just do with how you feel. It also kind of reminds me a little bit of Jade's Green Lantern powers. It's just cool. I kind of like how this is all. I like the emotions and the believing aspect of all of these abilities. So Courtney and Starman start to, well, Courtney and the Ultra Humanite fight, and she tells him that the staff doesn't work for him. That's what she says, I think, word for word. Like, the staff doesn't work for you. And she tells him that he's not worthy. And then the staff goes, Cosmo, I guess I should stop calling it the staff. Cosmo goes back to her. And that's when they have an epic fight, which was awesome because, you know, Stargirl's back, finally. I feel like Stargirl has been out of commission for a bit. Like, Courtney's been doing a lot of talking and making peace and trying to figure things out and stuff, but we haven't seen her really use Cosmo in a while. So, actually, now that I think about it, I don't think Courtney fights Starman. I think she just, or Silva, or freaking, you know who I'm talking about. I don't think she fights him. I think she just gets her staff back. But uh, Pat actually takes him on in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. But then it's Stargirl and I guess Icicle Jr. That's weird. It's Cameron and uh, Courtney versus Icicle and they fight. And it ends with Cameron blasting Icicle and Icicle just kind of vanishing. Like his face, he kind of, it looks like he kind of turns into gas and then just floats into the air. So he disappears. Pat hits Ultra Human. They're fighting and he ends up just hitting him with a big rock. So go Pat. That's pretty much it. That's the last opponent. So after that, Cameron says that he feels really bad about everything. He feels guilty for lying and being on his dad's side and all that. And Courtney offers the, she offers a helping hand, but he doesn't accept it. And he ends up just disappearing with his grandpa, which I do feel pretty bad Cameron. He kind of went through a lot again. Like he found out that his dad died last season. Then he suddenly came back this season. Also, he found out he has ice powers and just all sorts of, he's just learning everything this season, basically. Like it's just a lot for him. So I understand where he's coming from. This is a cute scene. It was kind of, a, I was a little confused at first, but I get it. So back at home, Courtney goes back down into the basement and she's talking to Cosmo and she says that 
Like she's looking at the fancy case that Ultra Humanite bought or created or whatever. And she says that he can go back if he wants to. But he flies back into the crate that she first found him in, which was cute. That was a cute scene. After that, Courtney asks Pat how he escaped from underground. And he, I forget what he said. He said something about dislocating something in his body or whatever. And he was able to just kind of wiggle out. And she, apparently Starman was the one who taught him how to do that. So Courtney says that he saved him one last time, which was sweet. Oh, and Pat gets kind of emotional just talking about Starman. Like you can tell he's he's feeling pretty sad. Pat says something about Dr. Weird. I guess that was one of their first nemesises, one of their first enemies. I don't know. I don't know who that is. I feel like that's a reference that I don't get, but I guess shout out to that. So Courtney tells Pat about how she basically says that she overheard the conversation between him and Starman or the ultra humanite and how he was being really like a huge jerk. And that she tells him that, that she was defending him and saying that he was great. But before she like finishes going on and on about what she said that he tells her that he overheard her conversation too and that was really sweet so we cut back to rick and beth's family and beth and he's basically apologizing for being kind of a jerk to them even though they were just trying to help and they accept his apology of course and that's when beth goes around and tells her family or her parents that she wants to officially accept their help and she wants them to be a part of the team and they're super excited and they start coming up with costume ideas and stuff it's kind of silly but beth's parents are weird but i feel like i kind of like this dynamic that they have where they're like really just want to get involved it's i think that's funny it's just weird coming from the whole like they want to get divorced thing but whatever so we go back to the hospital where we see sylvester in the hospital bed and apparently he's brain dead or the ultra humanite is brain dead so he's not really he can't be a threat anymore basically pretty much so courtney asks if sylvester's brain is still in there or some like what about sylvester's brain i don't understand how this brain process works pat says that they should keep him on life support oh and dr midnight's here by the way i totally forgot to mention that but pat says that they're gonna keep him on life support just in case he wakes up pretty much sylvester that is and then we see this part was bizarre to me but we see sylvester's brain like okay we see a snowy mountain and sylvester's brain is being kept in this room and you can see like i guess brain activity going off and there's a speaker repeating the last things that he said before he died which was creepy and strange and I don't understand what that's supposed to mean. Or like who put his brain there? So after that we get to Mike and he's seeing his mom at the diner. I guess they planned a meeting. I'm guessing Pat set it up. So Pat and Barbara are waiting in the car while Mike goes to talk to his mom. And we don't really hear the conversation they have, but uh, Mike comes back in and he says that she seems like she's getting, she's gone through some things. She's getting better, I guess is what he kind of insinuates. Or she's in a better place than where she was at some point. I, like I said, we don't hear their conversation. And then Mike thanks his dad and then he calls Barbara his mom and it's really sweet. It, again, another really sweet scene. This episode had a lot of sweet scenes. I just feel like some of the other scenes were abrupt, but we'll talk about that. And I totally forgot about this in the episode, which confused me, but Courtney goes to visit Becky who is actually the gambler's daughter, if you remember. I feel like she hasn't been mentioned since, a lot's happened since the beginning. She t gives Becky the letter and some pictures and she tells him that the gambler was trying to find her and her dad loved her and he was trying to find her and stuff. And Becky is, she kind of tears up and then she hugs Courtney. Again, another sweet scene. And then they have like a weird kind of awkward goodbye, but I mean, <laughs> I feel like that would have been, that would be awkward anyway, but yeah. And I think, okay, I feel like this was kind of, to me it was subtle because she doesn't say anything, but Courtney reaches for her locket after she's done visiting Becky. I assume like she kind of feels around her, whatever you'd call that part of, I, I guess chest, I don't know. She feels for that part of her body and then like, she kind of feels a little sad, it seems like. So I think that was her trying to reach for her locket, which is understandable because, you know, I guess she wants what Becky, or I mean, I don't think she is, super she doesn't long for a father figure in her life as much as she did before how she just wanted to see her dad and she wanted to believe that her dad was some hero but i think a part of her was kind of like feeling a little sad that her dad you know isn't like the gambler who was actually trying to find his daughter so yeah that was kind of sad for courtney but i they need to get her new locket i feel like one from pat and barbara or something or not i don't know i just feel like that locket was so important to her but you know whatever so we're at the graveyard where or not the graveyard the forest where uh rick buried grundy and he's telling Grundy that everybody's come back, Icicle, Dragon King, other people, <laughs> how they, everyone managed to come back except for Grundy and he misses him. And that's when Grundy shows up. Well, his arm just appears from the ground. That kind of wrap up that plot line. Like I said, Grundy hasn't been mentioned for a lot of the season, but I guess it's good to know he's 
back. So then we have a, a dinner scene at the Star family's house. I still don't know what to call them. And everybody's there. The JSA, uh, Cindy's there. Well, she's I, she's a part of the JSA. I doubt they like kicked her out. I guess you know, but you know what? Never mind. I'll talk about that later. Actually, no, I'm talking about that now because I know I'm gonna forget. Yolanda never apologized to Cindy. What the heck? But anyway, Cindy's there. So Beth's parents are having a conversation about costumes with Rick and Beth, and Yolanda sees that and seeing Beth's parents having a really good relationship with them, especially all that they've been through. She decides to call her mom and she basically tells her that she's been lying and she's hoping that the truth, by telling the truth, it'll bring them closer. We don't get any more from Yolanda and her parents. I think it's just kind of messed up that they kicked her out at all, so we'll see. So Courtney goes to Cameron's home and she kind of just stares outside creepily. <laughs> and that's when it starts to snow. And then Cameron shows up and he brings up that she asked for help or she offered her help. So that ends that. <laughs> okay, so then we get a little time skip. It's been three months and we are in Denmark something following Icicle. And Icicle's just kind of walking about by himself. And then that's when Artemis shows up and basically she he sets him on fire and kills him. <laughs> and that's how Icicle dies. We'll talk about this in a bit. <laughs> Okay, so the series finally ends with the Shade leading a tour of the museum, the Justice Society Museum, or whatever it's actually called. And he's showing a bunch of people around. And we hear about, not the original, the new Justice Society, I guess, the Justice Society that we've come to know throughout this show of Stargirl. And he references all of them, Star Woman, Dr. Midnight, Dragon Queen, Wildcat, everybody, Our Man, who I used to think was Owl Man for some reason, and just a bunch of people, including Mike and Jakeem. And after that happens, well, during that tour, the Flash appears, like the old Flash, the one, the old man with like the hat with the wings. I think they're wings. I, I don't know, he appears out of some kind of portal. I don't know anything about Flash and like the whole, I don't know, I don't know what that was, I'm sorry. But he appears and he says that there's some trouble, something about, oh gosh, I forgot what he says actually, I don't remember, but basically he says there's trouble and they need the Shade's help. And yeah, that's kind of how the show ends. Well, Sh Shade says something about wanting to help. And then I forget when this happens, I don't know if the Shade says this, something about Nebula Man, I, I don't know. I can't elaborate because I honestly forgot exactly what was said, but something about Nebula Man, I don't know who that is, but yeah. The episode ends with the line, well not the line, but it says never the end, which I feel like that's what I've been saying. That's what I've been saying about comic book shows and shows that adapt comic books, like they never really end. Even when, even when they end, they don't end because there's always more to be had, which is kind of what happens at the end of this show. But yeah, that's the end of the series. Like I said, it feels kind of rushed. Like Icicle's death was just weird. <laughs> Cause like Artemis, okay, she's had a few different appearances this season, but she hasn't done a whole lot. And then her parents died and we got to see her grieve a little bit. We got to see her being really upset and she plotted her revenge. Well, not plotted her revenge, but she was going to get her revenge. But Sylvester talks her out of it, I guess. She doesn't show up for the final fight, which doesn't really bother me. But the fact that it just feels unsatisfying. It's like, okay, there wasn't really any buildup to this whole revenge thing. It's just kind of like, oh, Artemis got her revenge. That's it. But keep in mind all these complaints I think, I don't think Icicle would have died. Probably, I feel like that would have gone drawn, gotten drawn out if we'd gotten another season or more seasons. But the show is ending this season, so they had to do something. I don't, I heard that there was alternate endings or an alternate ending that leaves things open and an ending that kind of closes the book. I guess this is the one that closes the book. I feel, still have questions about Sylvester's brain though. And I guess technically there's like a villain at the end that, or there's a new threat they need to stop at the end, but we don't really see what the threat is. So to me, it's like, that's not like an ending where it's like, a cliffhanger ending like oh no we were supposed to see more it's like it just kind of it's just kind of saying like oh there's always going to be trouble there's always going to be some kind of threat that needs to be stopped there were some really strong individual moments of the episode like barbara shooting icicle that was cool i feel like that was really cool too because her relationship with paula was developing and it kind of just got cut short like they were really they were starting to become, well they were friends already but it's like their friendship could have gotten stronger had they not been killed the crocs that is so it's kind of nice to see her kind of get like a revenge shot type of thing to protect her family plus on top of that i like the i like the fact that she's actually defending herself and not just kind of like not fighting i mean i don't think everybody needs to fight and there can be supportive roles but it's nice to see that she's willing to step up to defend her family that was i also liked the scene with star girl uh well courtney becoming star girl again finally because it's been so long courtney has not gotten to be star girl that much and she got a cool line in my opinion i like that she I like the belief part of that. It was up to her whether or not Sylvester was worthy, I guess, or the ultra humanite was worthy. I mean, kind of like the fact that she believed he was worthy made him worthy, but the fact that now she knows the truth and he's evil, it stopped working for him, Cosmo that is. So that was a cool scene. And she got like a cool flip. Ah, oh, I just loved it. 
But yeah, I feel like all the villains, actually, now that I think about it, got taken down kind of abruptly, not just Icicle. His death was weird, but the fight with him, in my opinion, it wasn't like, that one was fine, I was fine with, because, well, he did, I guess because he didn't die, he just got beaten up and then just retreated. His death, to me, was abrupt and weird, but the fight itself was fine. And then, okay, Lily's death was also a little strange to me. It feels like she just kind of died. I, maybe it's just because I didn't expect her to die. It was also sudden. I'm glad the grandpa survived, because he was, he wanted to move on from all the fighting and stuff. He was done with it, so that was cool. And I'm glad Cameron has somebody, and somebody who cares about him and loves him and stuff, so that's cool. I don't know if he's ever going to tell him what happened to his teacher, because, you know, he was there. He saw it go down. And finally, Dr. Ito's death was very... It was just weird. <laughs> Jakeem just wished him into a stuffed animal. It was like, okay, there wasn't much of a fight. Cause you know, we found out he was, I think it just bothers me. And you know what, the Ultra Humanite too. It bothers me because we just got this big reveal about like who everybody really is, not just Icicle. Icicle, we found out that he was around a while ago, but Starman, we found out was actually the Ultra Humanite just recently, like last episode. We just found out that Dragon King is actually, I mean, the Ultra Humanite who, we thought was ultra human it was actually dragon king we just found that out and then they kind of just got taken down it's like we learned the truth and then our the characters immediately learn the truth it felt really quick that's just my opinion like i don't know if this would have been drawn i don't know if that conflict specifically would have been drawn out had we gotten more seasons i think the icicle thing for sure would have gotten drawn out because i don't know if he just kind of abruptly died like i said so this wasn't the best episode i don't dislike it it was okay i guess it's just i wish it was like i wish the season was longer i guess i wish we got more rather than just having things kind of end the way that they did. But it's not really the show's fault. I feel like there was never a reconciliation with Cindy. She was just kind of, ki not kicked out, but they beat her. Yolanda and Rick beat her up. And then she was out of the group, basically. Well, she left. She, I mean, she did meet up with uh, Jakeem and Mike, but they didn't have any beef with her. So that's not really the same thing. Like They were already trying to recruit her into their little team. But she never got an apology from Yolanda. She never really got any reconciliation with Courtney or Beth or Rick. And nothing. I mean, Rick goes there in an apology too, let's be honest. So it was kind of strange to me. And I feel like things also ended poorly for Cameron and the JSA with the exception of Courtney. But I feel that to me, that's more understandable because there were reasons for them to kind of dislike each other. I, I mean, there were reasons for Cindy to dislike the JSA, I guess. Well, Cindy and, okay, other way around. There were reasons for the JSA to dislike Cindy, but I mean, at the end, she's with them at the family dinner. So it's kind of weird. By the way, where is Artemis? I just realized she wasn't at the family dinner. So I thought maybe Barbara took her in or the Star family took her in, but she was nowhere to be found. So I don't know what was going on with that. Yeah, I have no idea where she is. I hope she didn't end up back at an orphanage. I don't know. We don't really find out. Also, we don't find out how Artemis found Icicle again. You know what? Never mind. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop talking about that. I'm just gonna say that his death was weird. It was too abrupt. It was just disappointing. I almost pre would have preferred him just not dying as opposed to seeing him die like this. It was just weird. I don't know if I have much else to say about this, actually. I think I've got out everything I wanted to say. I'm really glad that I watched this show. I got into it. It's been a few months at this point, I think, but I got into it when the start of season three was, or when season three was kind of first starting. So I really loved the show. I think season one's my favorite season, but this season was good too. Like I said, just the ending was a little weird. I think it's partially because it's a series finale, not just the season finale. If it was like an actual season finale, I think things would have been a little different, just maybe drawn out a bit more or expanded upon rather than just kind of having it all wrap up at the end. But uh, I don't regret watching the show. I definitely would watch it again because it was just a fun show, even though it's super long. I'm not great with 40 minute episodes of a show. As for what I'm gonna do next on my channel, I'm not 100% sure. I'm thinking I might go back to Wee Bear Bear reviews. Maybe. I wanna keep uploading because I feel like I've been neglecting this channel. So that's something I might do. I don't know how exactly I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna try just to put something up because I don't really have any, there aren't really any shows going on right now that I'm keeping up with. At this point, the review's over, by the way. I'm just going on about my channel. So yeah, I guess next time, maybe I'll post a Wee Bear Bears review. Probably. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I guess let me know what you thought of the finale. I liked it kind of. There are parts of it I really didn't like, but there are parts of it I like. Overall, I wish the show would continue. Uh, I hope it comes back. If it comes back, I'm watching. I'm totally gonna tune in, but I feel like that's not gonna happen. Oh well, whatever. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.